Good afternoon. With the weather warming up and looking at the forecast, there doesn't appear to be any more frost coming our way. So we made the decision to um, just take out the uh, greenhouse. Wanted to show you some of what you can expect when you put your tropicals inside a greenhouse that is uh, unheated. So the I believe this is uh, the Van Dyke mango, but I mean, yeah, the, the mango they they do. I mean, it, it fared pretty well. I, I'm not seeing any damage at all on this guy. This is uh, the the more common variety. Uh, so, although common, when when it developed fruit and we tasted the fruit, I mean, it really was a lot better than what you see at the stores. Uh, this guy is. We actually had to uh, top him off. He was just getting a bit too tall. But this is the almighty Lanzatella mango. Not seeing a whole lot of damage on it. In fact, this is all new growth while it was in the greenhouse. So, surprisingly, one thing that surprised me was uh, this black diamond wax shampoo here. You know, I thought it was going to do a lot better than uh, it is, just um, given the size of the tree. But uh, I mean, it's completely defoliated. But I mean, it is green. I scratched it the other day, so it's it's very much alive. Compared to <laughs> this other wax shampoo here, which is actually on, a bit on the young side, and I mean, this guy is uh, mostly intact. So just very bizarre. Um, here is I believe this is a an Afonso. Yeah, this guy got some damage, even though it's it's you know somewhat protected inside a sheltered greenhouse here. But I mean, a lot of these are expected. Coffee tree, of course. This one is uh, in a container. It, it's doing a lot better than the one that was uh, in the ground uh, back in the other corner of the yard. So yeah, a lot of the mangoes. I mean, they do really well. Um, there's obviously there's some damage here and there for with some of the other more sensitive uh, varieties but for the most part if you look at the growth on these guys I mean they're just really just bouncing back Lucida um, Chiamoya is doing pretty nice uh, Sam with uh, a Pierce Chiamoya here back here both of these I'm going to put in the ground in the next few weeks once the weather really really warms up and also the entire plastic uh, that's on the pergola we also removed but I wanted to show you see the dragon fruits up there for the past year and a half two years we've been encouraging the dragon fruits to just focus mostly on its growth because we wanted uh, something to cover the pergola up there and now that it's done that, this year I'm going to uh, encourage the plant to produce flowers. Um, ironically, all these dragon fruits, these are the red flesh variety. Let me show you the difference. So this batch right here, we actually got from a uh, just a, 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 a person that was selling it uh, in uh, in Los Angeles, just in Chinatown, it was basically a sidewalk person selling it. Compared to these that we got from um, the nursery, these got we got them from the, the nursery. When you look at it, I mean, it, it's doing okay, but the other bats just kind of just really explode in growth. So, no idea why, but. Yeah, I mean everything seems to be doing okay. Not seeing a whole lot of uh, damage on any of these. Going back to this uh, section a bit. BQ Longins, uh, for the most part, is doing okay. Some uh, damage here on the new leaves, but you know, not to worry. The new ones are coming out to take its place. 
ice cream uh, bean tree is awesome in the Inga. No noticeable damage whatsoever. The uh, Chico Zapote, I want to say it did flower or still is flowering. Yeah, there's actually a, a flower right here. No damage at all. Yeah, this, this guy you really don't need to protect. But I just had the space here, so, you know, mine as well. And of course, the two wax jambus, um, I believe this is a jumbo fragrance, and that's probably a red rocket, but they're very much alive. Uh, in fact, the red rocket, I mean, as you can see, the limbs are st very much green. And the, let me see if I can get back here, the green thornless jujube. This is actually one of the first signs that uh, it was time for us to uh, remove the greenhouse. Is when you look at the green thornless, actually let me see if I can get a closer shot here. Not sure if you could see it, but it is pushing out some new growth. Uh, there's a lot of new leaves and branches that's being pushed out from this tree. So it's doing awesome. And of course the Jamaican cherry, also known as the strawberry tree. Very much green of course. It'll bounce right back up once the temperature warms up. So anyhow, yeah, I just wanted to um, give you kind of a an expectation at what you would get in a when you put your tropicals in a, a greenhouse uh, that is basically unheated. Um, I mean, they for the most part they do okay. Now, uh, if you look at the carry stuff with there, I mean, that guy seems like it's not been bothered at all by the cold. So, doing okay. Yeah, a lot of these, um, once the weather warms up, I mean, they will bounce right back up. You know, the, the two mangoes that really surprised me in terms of cold hardiness uh, is the uh, Lanzatella here, which is the, the five pound producing mangoes. And also the Kesar mango, which is this guy right here. Um, this tall guy right here, that's a Kesar mango. Probably the world's sweetest mango. I'm surprised that they did really well given their uh, origination. I mean, both of these, I believe, came from India or, or native to India. But yeah, mangoes, um, a lot of them do okay. There are some that are a bit more sensitive, of course. Um, Malika here also originates from India. Yeah, it happens. But the tree itself is very much alive. So anyhow, yeah, this is uh, you know, this is what you can expect for uh, protecting your tropicals in a an unheated greenhouse. All right, have a good afternoon.